What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Around the Table Sports. If you're into high school football, college football, or NFL, consider giving the channel a like and subscribe as I try and give decently updated content on players, evaluations, and especially high school football recruiting. But that brings me into what we are going to talk about today, and that is a huge day today for high school football recruiting for both the University of Alabama and Ohio State. Now, I want to start with Jordan Hancock, who just had decommitted from Clemson, and he was a big part of that Clemson class. But he committed to Ohio State today, and it really is helping solidify Ohio State as one of the better recruiting classes of all time. If you look at how many recruits they have right now, how much room they have, and the guys that they're chasing, it's not hard to think that they could hit that mark of 324.62, which Florida hit in 2010, which is, statistically speaking, the best high school recruiting class of all time. Now, there are some questions as to whether and how that's measured, right? How 24-7 Sports did this is they looked at what their recruiting rank was in high school so they didn't take into factor what those players did in college and where they were drafted so it was a simple projection list however the top 10 has all been programs that during that time frame were wildly successful right first in 2010 with florida second in 2017 with alabama's class 2018 georgia 2014 Alabama, 2013 Alabama, 2019 Alabama, 2018 Ohio State, 2006 USC, 2012 Alabama, and lastly 2007 Florida. So these programs that are in this top 10, it's no surprise really when you look at the years that it happened. It's all the programs that have been just powerhouse recruiting and both recruiting players to their institutions and then sending players to the NFL. I mean, these places are just factories. And it's interesting to note that Ohio State right now with this commitment is just over the 300 range. I believe right now Ohio State is sitting at 305 points according to 24-7 Sports. And that is nuts considering that they're still in the running for the number two overall player in the nation. And they still are trying to flip J.C. Latham from Alabama. Now, personally, I think J.C. Latham stays with the University of Alabama because they're going to be trying to do something really special this year on the offensive line. And I think J.C. Latham realizes that, realizes who the quarterback there is, and it's a very unique opportunity right there. But don't count that flip out, and they're going to be actively trying. Ryan Day is taking notes straight out of Urban Meyer's playbook, who took notes straight out of Nick Saban's playbook. It doesn't matter whether you're committed or not, they're still coming after you. And I respect it. But right now, Ohio State could effectively beat that Florida class within the next few commitments. But I want to talk about Jordan Hancock specifically, because he is ranked as the number 47. But I want to talk about Jordan Hancock specifically, as he is ranked as the number 77 overall player in the nation, number six cornerback. And if you look at his 24-7 sports comp, they comp him to Byron Murphy with the Arizona Cardinals. For those of you college football heads will remember just last year and the year before, Byron Murphy with the Washington Huskies, he was incredible. I mean, he laid down some awesome hits. It was a really, really, really fun player to watch. I always looked forward to watching Washington games just to see what he was going to do. So... That already is high praise, and it was interesting reading up on what Jordan Hancock had said, and he said that Ohio State was really trying to get to him that he could be the inside corner with Sean Wade moving to the outside this year, and they were going to use him a lot like they use Sean Wade. And when he talked about the projections with the recruiter Combs, they were talking first rounder. You know, I mean, that's when you look at all of this, you got to realize that. Ohio State is no joke this year, and Ryan Day is not letting his foot off the gas. In fact, it's not going to be a drop-off from Urban Meyer at all. The University of Ohio State is a premier program, and any given year, them and Alabama are consistently the best two programs in the nation. Clemson's right there, LSU as of recent, Georgia as of recent. But really, if you're not with those schools, they're recruiting laps around others. But that gets me into the second area today. And that is another school I just named, the University of Alabama. Remember in the last video we made about the Brockmeyer twins when we were saying that in April, a lot of pundits were saying Alabama's class was dead in the water, right? They were like 50th in the nation, and now they, before this commitment with Terrence Ferguson, they sat at 6th in the nation. 
And as I said in that video, I think that this Alabama offensive line class could be the best of all time, right? And we could see two things in the same year. We could see Ohio State become the best recruiting class overall of all time, just because if you look at who they're recruiting, they, they're still in running for the number two player in the nation, and that kid would be an absolute difference maker, and he'd play alongside Jack Sawyer, and that would be terrifying. So we could have Ohio State becoming the best recruiting class in NCAA history, and that's a recent history because of how recruiting goes. It's a lot of recency bias into it. Nonetheless, impressive. And then Alabama claiming the best recruiting class on the offensive line front of all time. And people really, really sleep on what it means to recruit well at offensive line. A lot of fans are clamoring, oh, well, we should go after this receiver or that receiver. But those receivers are only as good as the offensive line protecting them, right? Uh, if the offensive line protecting them isn't very good, which we're going to get into in a video that's coming out later today about JT Daniels, and you'll see it in that video. JT Daniels' offensive line at USC was absolutely inconsistent, and it showed, and it actually hurt some of his development. But I digress. If you don't recruit well at the offensive line, it doesn't matter who you have at receiver. Once again, USC, they have Amon Ross St. Brown. They had Pittman. Great, talented guys at receiver, and they had a very talented quarterback, but the inconsistent play on the offensive line made it to where all of that's kind of hard to come to fruition. They don't have the time, and is the quarterback can be great, but he's only as great as the offensive line allows him, and the same goes for the receivers. They have to wait on the ball, and if the quarterback doesn't have time, they're probably not going to get it. So Terrence Ferguson commits to the University of Alabama today which now bolsters their class, uh, a class that is just absolutely on the move, and watch them. They could become the number two class in this uh, whole year. They are still in the running for a lot of top guys. Uh, I think Ohio State will edge them out in the end, but Alabama, I think, could finish second or third, and it could be a really, really solid class. I highlighted some guys that I think could commit there, and I mean, it's just nuts to think at who they're still trying to get. They're still after Amarius Mims out of Georgia, and that would give them three five-star offensive linemen in the same class. Right now they're sitting at two. Terrence Ferguson's the number two guard in the nation, number 47 overall player. So right now you have the Brockermeyer, Tommy Brockermeyer, who's the number one tackle. You have J.C. Latham. You have James Brockermeyer, who's the number one center, and now you have the number two offensive guard in the nation, all in the same class. I know Bryce Young has to be ecstatic, and it's really awesome to see in a year where so much has happened that has just completely taken apart the fabric of what high school football recruiting was with the coronavirus. I mean, it completely dismantled the whole institution of how, it, of how recruiting had to go down, and it's really forced a lot of coaches into the 21st century, a la Nick Saban. And it's just showing the greatness of a lot of these programs, right? It's, it, it, it really is showing the disparity. Because in Ohio State, a Georgia, an LSU, and an Alabama have the benefit of having the brand kind of recruit for them. But that being said, you still have to have the results because kids aren't stupid. They realize that, like, at Oliver a few years ago. I can get drafted out of anywhere, right? I, I can go anywhere as long as I'm in a good place where I can be developed and I will get recognition. I can become a first-round draft pick. Now, it's difficult, but you don't need Alabama. You don't need Ohio State. That being said, it significantly helps your chances because of the institutions that they are, the coaching staffs. Well, that's about it for this video. Uh, like I said in the beginning, if you like football sport content, specifically football, high school to college, go ahead and consider giving this channel a thumbs up and a subscribe. I try and upload as much as I can, and as the weeks go on, I'll be able to upload more and more. This is a brand new channel, and I'm very new to this, so I'm kind of hitting my stride in how all of this is going down. So if you'd consider liking and subscribing and dropping a comment as to what you would like to see. Well, that's it for today. See you.